Here's a clock kit I just recently finished assembling. I deviated a little bit from how the manufacturer intended it to look, but I think it looks better, honestly. This is the Clock Watchers clock from J. Carr, and I'm going to plug it in now so you can see something other than the reflection of my face. I just hooked up the 9 volt AC adapter, and you can see it's got a uh, very interesting animation. Thankfully it's interesting because there are no options to switch to a different one. Each uh, second a dot moves to its correct place in exactly one second until it fills up like that and then the cycle begins anew. The manufacturer intended this to have a uh, plastic dome over it. This case is just a um, you know cheap plastic analog clock case. Where the battery holder is now is where a uh, quartz movement was intended to be. I thought the dome looked kind of cheap so I just went without it. Now the one thing that kind of happened to work out by chance was the uh, arrangement of the buttons. The directions told you to uh, mount the buttons on the back of the circuit board, but there's really no space for them to protrude through the back of the case. They're not really long enough and they kind of interfere with other things in there, so I mounted them on the front. And that actually works out totally okay, because you can press them by pressing down on the filter a little bit. The middle button here is the mode button, and the first mode is set hours doing a cool little uh, racing up and down thing. So you can uh, increment or decrement the hours by pressing off to either side. You can press pretty far away from the, the center if you want. So I'd say that worked out really nice. Then next is the minutes. Um, this is the alarm enable. There's two alarms on this thing. This is the main alarm with the beeper, which you can see up there. This is the uh, kind of auxiliary alarm, which uses an optocoupler. I don't have anything hooked up to that, so nothing to demonstrate there. Let's turn on the main alarm now. And there's the time for that. Uh, I just set the current time to one something, so we'll set the alarm time to, I don't know, 104. I think that should be good enough. And these are the, the alarm times for the optocoupler. Figure what this is. The clock time is currently 107, so I'm going to just set the alarm time to 108. And it'll go off in one minute. So we can uh, watch that cool animation again. This clock uses then fairly new blue LEDs. And apparently, it was a fairly expensive option on this already expensive clock kit. And there goes the alarm. You can see the alarm LED is very bright. I didn't change the resistor for that. I changed the resistors for everything else though. Like a lot of other LED clock kits, this thing massively overdrives the LEDs. I bumped the resistors up from 220 ohms to 1K, and I'd say they're still plenty bright. There's unfortunately no light sensor in this, and no brightness option. So, this is the default brightness. I uh, basically you know, used my bench supply to find a current that uh, you know, would produce a reasonable brightness that isn't eye searing, and uh, that worked out to around you know, needing a resistance of 1K, which is what I had enough of to uh, populate this thing, since it's a very common value. If I'm remembering correctly, the original selling price of this clock was 200 Australian dollars. It's an Australian kit. I got it for the wonderful price of one dollar. One of the best deals I've ever gotten on eBay. Well, one dollar plus shipping. So now, let me show you the uh, inside. So there it is without the filter in the way. You can see that some of these LEDs don't match, and that's because I had to replace them. I tested all the LEDs uh, 
you know, right out of the bag, and there were several dead ones, which obviously did not bode well. And after actually assembling this thing, I found out a number were dead. I decided to prioritize using the spares on the LED ring, so those are all correct. The replacements don't stand out too badly, especially with the filter in place. You can see one of them there lit up. It was unfortunately impossible to find these early, uh, kind of milky sky blue colored blue LEDs. If they're still being made, I wasn't able to uh, locate them. The maker did originally use all blue uh, resistors, which you know blends in nicely. But uh, I didn't have quite enough of those in a 1K, so I had to use some of these, uh, you know, plain tan ones. There's the clock chip there, or microprocessor really, dated 2006-05-20. I'm not sure when this kit was discontinued, but I believe it's been discontinued for a while. It's got a little AM, PM indicator light there in the corner, which is nice. It has jumper selectable 12 or 24 hours. I've got it set to 12 because that's my preference. You can see it's got these big uh, drive transistors here. And these are LED drivers as well. Everything's multiplexed, of course. And uh, I guess because of the way they were overdriving the LEDs so hard, they needed these larger transistors. I you know, greatly reduced the current draw by going from 220 ohms to uh, you know, 1K. So everything should run nice and cool now. This clock uses an arrangement I don't particularly like. The voltage regulator is set up for 5.8 volts. It's a switching regulator. And then through some diodes it drops that down a little bit. So the clock chip is being run off of up to 5.6 volts. And it's rated for 4.5 to 5.5 volts with an absolute maximum rating of 6 volts. So they're running it over the recommended voltage. Which is not ideal. This is, however, an adjustable regulator, so if I feel adventurous, I may try uh, adjusting that down. It also has a very simple battery charger circuit, which charges uh, four, you know, NICAD or nickel metal hydrate rechargeable batteries. And because of the higher voltage that they're using, we we'll also kind of be overcharging those batteries. So I may uh, see if I can figure out how to adjust this regulator down to a more reasonable voltage. Something under 5.5 at least. So there's the brand, J-Car Electronics. I'm sorry for not doing a uh, radio video. Um, just kind of got late here and I decided to just do a quick clock video. I wanted to save that special radio I got fixed recently for my 2000 subscriber video and my channel's getting pretty close to that. I uh, put some notes on the back of this just in case I forget or some future person uses this as to uh, what battery should go in there and what power supply should be used. They recommended 12 volts, 500 milliamps, but they're generating a 5.8 volt supply from it so there's no real reason to have the supply voltage that high. I just remembered what this last setting is here in the settings menu. This is an adjustment for the clock's oscillator. You can set it to plus or minus a few seconds per day to account for you know inaccuracy of this crystal here. It doesn't use a real-time clock or anything so that frequency is going to vary with temperature and all that. Here's the box that came in. It's the J-Car Clock Watchers clock. You can see there's a mention of a magazine there from June 2005. So this kit's uh, almost 15 years old. They've been sitting for some time. Here's what's left inside the box. This is the uh, plastic clock face. I personally don't think it looks all that great and I'd have the issue of where to put the buttons. I mean I could wire additional buttons on the bottom but I kind of like how this worked out with the filter being flush with the case. The black and blue looks nice, so I'm just going to leave it. Unfortunately, the filter wasn't quite big enough, so there's a little bit of a uh, kind of square edge on all sides, but not enough to really detract. Here's some of the parts I didn't use. 
It was an expensive kit, but they use off-brand uh, suntan capacitors. And since these are from 2005 or so, and that's when that whole capacitor plague was going on with, you know, crappy counterfeit caps, I decided not to use them. And there's all those 220 ohm resistors and the LEDs that were dead right out of the bag. Here's the manual. I'm not really going to go through it. Um, you can probably find this online. Here's the circuit diagram with uh, my annotations on there. Some of it's from when I was trying to figure out the dead LEDs situation. Only one of them was due to a uh, damaged trace. Everything else was just bad LEDs. There's the layout. Then they attached an article that includes an additional earlier schematic for the previous version of the clock, just for uh, confusion. It also provides some directions for you know, putting the clock together and how the clock works. It supposedly synchronizes to the AC line, but it's expecting 50 hertz, not 60, at least according to this article. I don't know if it's just disregarding the 60 hertz and using the internal time base. It's definitely not treating the 50 hertz as if it was 60 hertz, though. So there's the older schematic. That's what's on the back of the thing there. The inductor and the two caps and connectors and all that. You see they just showed crude holes drilled in the back there to get at those switches. Just kind of have to stick your finger through the holes. Definitely not ideal. Well, thanks for watching.